Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. My name is Andrew Glazer, and today I would like to teach you how to use the graph to find the polynomial function. So it turns out we can kind of use a very simple model. We're going to write f of x, okay, is equal to some coefficient, c, multiplied now by certain factors, right? And these factors are going to be x plus or minus some constant value, I'll call it a, multiplied by x plus or minus some constant value b times uh, x plus or minus some constant value c. And what we'll do is we'll also raise them to some exponents, all right? Now these numbers here, I'm not differentiating like x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3. I, these could be the same, they could not be the same. I don't want to make it too confusing. They're just going to be some powers up there, okay? And, then, and what we got to figure out here is going to be these three parts, basically. The coefficient, these constants in those factors, and then the powers, all right, that's our job. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the x-intercepts, okay? X-intercepts, and what these things are gonna help us find is they're gonna help us find the values inside of our factors, okay? So what you do, you go to your graph, locate the x-intercepts. That's where the function touches or crosses that x-axis, okay? So you have an x-intercept there at negative two. So I'll write x is equal to negative two. And then you have another x-intercept over here, it looks like at positive three, right? So you're gonna write x is equal to positive three. Now these x-intercepts, like I said, will help us find the a and the b and the c value, whatever you got, all right? And all you have to do now, once you have that x-intercept, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the value, negative two, you're gonna change the sign and write it in, okay? So in other words, this is going to be x now, not minus two, but it's going to be a plus two, okay? So that's what I mean by change the sign. So just erase that write in plus two. And the reason for this is because when you go back to factored form, you have to change the sign, right? Because if you remember, like if you had a polynomial like x plus two, let's just say, and then x, you know, minus three. When you solve these, right, you set them both equal to zero. So it'd be x plus two equal to zero, x minus three equal to zero. And then you would solve this for x and x would have been negative two, right? So x equaling negative two correlates with the factor of x plus two. That's why we're just changing the sign. All right. Now, same thing's gonna happen here with the x is equal to positive three. So you're going to now go to your second factor in there, get rid of the plus minus b, and just now write negative or minus three, okay? Now, if you have no other x-intercepts, guess what you're gonna do? Just erase the remaining part, right? I should have written a little dot, dot, dot out there. It might go to, you know, you might have 1400 factors. Hopefully you don't, because that'll take you a very long time on the test. But you know, some professors like to uh, make their tests a little more challenging than others. So uh, what we've done now is we found those factors, okay? The next thing I wanna do is then find the powers. So this is where we look at the degree, or we're gonna, well, I mean, that's what we are finding. We are finding the degree, Andrew. It's not what we're gonna look at. What we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at the behavior now uh, around those x-intercepts, okay? So behavior, and you can call it the local behavior, right? Local meaning close to, right? It sounds very smart when you say, ooh, the local behavior around the x-intercept of negative two, right? But local just means close to. So the behavior close to uh, your x-intercepts now. So basically what I mean by that, or the behavior at the x-intercept, whatever you wanna call it. Basically when you have something that looks like this where the function comes and it bounces, right? It, it goes and it goes boop, and it bounces back down, right? It could have been from the top and it, boop, it bounces back up. Anytime you have a little bouncer ruski, all right, you know that it's going to be an even power to that factor. Whenever it crosses that x-axis, it doesn't do a little bumper ruski, it does a little crosser ruski now, right? And the cross could look like this too. It might snake a little bit, that's fine, but it's crossing that x-axis. In other words, it's going from low to high, okay? Or it could have been high to low. If you notice, this is low and then it's also ending low. So that's when you have a little bumper, bumper ruski, okay? So this is then an odd multiplicity. Now, to help you out, right? I mean, you can use that. You should kind of memorize this a little bit. When you have an even power, you notice how they both do a little bumper roo, all right? And when you have an odd power, notice how they do a little crosser roo. Uh, you know, whether it's pointing up or pointing then down, that'll depend on the coefficient, okay? Or the constant. Don't worry about that though for right now. I don't care that this is, you know, going down here at all, and this is, it, it does not matter, okay? What I'm most concerned about is just labeling it even and odd, and now I have to figure out the value, okay? Now it's like, well, even, Andrew, I mean, you got two, you got four, you got six, what number is it? Well, that's gonna be very hard to differentiate, 
Uh, but it says of least degree. So therefore, what's the least even number you know of? Well, I would say it's going to be 2. Okay. So I have at my x, you know, when I for my factor, I should say, uh, let me move these factors on down now. For this factor here, right, which gave rise to that x-intercept of negative 2, it would have an <clears throat> even power up here. And the least even number I know is 2. Similarly with the odd. Okay, once it starts snaking, then you have something like 3 or 5. But if it just crosses straight, basically linearly, more or less, the it'll be the least value, odd value, you know of, and that would be a 1. So those indeed now are the powers. So you can go back up there and erase them, okay, and you're going to plug in 2 and a 1. All right. Now, last but not least, we're going to find then the C value. Okay, how do we find the C value? Well, it turns out that we first got to find the Y intercept. All right. So now do number three. And by the way, if you want to understand why evens bump and odds cross, I got a video explaining that in much detail. I think it'll be very helpful because it kind of will explain like why it happens. And I don't want you to memorize stuff. I want you to understand it first. And then maybe you memorize some stuff because it'll make it faster on the test. But please don't just memorize and not understand, all right? Let's understand first, and then you can memorize. Now, uh, it turns out that we got to find the y-intercept, okay? Uh, that'll become clear in a second. So it looks like the y-intercept down here looks like the y-intercept is going to be negative 3, right? So y will equal negative 3. Now, remember, there's something unique about that point, right? You know the x value is 0 because every y-intercept has an x value of 0, and the y value will then be negative 3. Now, what I'm going to do, <clears throat> if I look back at this function, I have two, un oh, I have three unknowns, excuse me. I have the f of x value, which remember is the y value. I have the x values, and then I have the constant. But if I have a known point, can I plug that in? Now, it turns out that you don't even need the y-intercept because you could have used, now I'm realizing, right, you could have even used these factors, uh, these x-intercepts to do it. Right? But why don't we just use this y-intercept? Actually, it might not work out that way. Eh. You know what? Let's try it. I've always done it with the y-intercept. Let's do it with the y-intercept. I'm going to check with the x-intercept, and let's see what the heck happens. Right? The more practice you do, by the way, the more ways you're going to see how to do a problem. And there's many more ways than probably I even see it. All right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to plug in negative 3 for my, my y-value, my f of x value. That's going to be equal to then c. Multiplied now by plug in 0 for x everywhere you see x, and then plus 2 squared is going to be 0 plus uh, minus, excuse me, 3. Raised to the first, you don't have to worry about that. So this is negative 3 equals now c. Uh, yeah, I'll keep the color the same. Then multiplied now by, this would be 2 in here, and 2 squared is going to be 4, right? This is times negative 3. So this whole side becomes negative 12, right? So that's negative 3. I'm going to change the color now. C times negative 12, divide by negative 12 on both sides, all right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to have c now being equal to negative divided by negative is a positive. That's going to be positive one-fourth. So that's your c value. So you can go back to your function now, erase the c, and plug in a value of one-fourth. If this were negative, for example, if it were to come out negative, then you would plug in the negative sign as well. But that's all it is now. Clean it up, just get rid of the one because you don't really need it. And guess what? Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's the function. Whether you now have to kind of, you know, put this in standard form where you got to foil this or just leave it, I have no idea. But that is the fun. That is that. That's it. You can graph this now. Take out your TI calculator and graph it. Right. It should look exactly like this. Now let's see if that other technique was going to work. All right. So what I'll do is erase. And this is kind of like as you do more practice problems, you see, oh, maybe that way will work, or maybe it won't work. We'll see. Let's see if we could have used one of our x-intercepts though. Right, so what's the x-intercept here? It should in theory. I don't see why it wouldn't, but, you know, you never know. So this is going to be negative 2, right? And you also know something about the y-value. It's going to be 0. So what you can do is go back to... Let me erase this step. Okay, let me erase that step. Go back to your original function now. Plug in 0 for your y. 0 for your y. Yeah, that probably won't work, actually. I see why it's not going to work. And uh, you can plug in the negative 2 for your... Okay. So you have your C, you'll see why it won't work. Yeah, sometimes I, as I'm doing the problem, I'm like, oh, maybe there's a different way to do it. I investigate it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Well, you'll see why, okay? This is how you figure things out, by the way, all right, when, you, when you're practicing. You just kind of, you just think about things a little bit, and you see where it's going to take you, okay? So this is now going to be negative 2. 
right? That's the x value. So everywhere you have your x's now, please plug in a negative 2. So erase that, erase that, and you would have plugged in a negative 2, okay? And you would have plugged in a negative 2. So now what would you get? Negative 2 plus 2 is going to be 0. 0 squared. And this would be now negative 2 minus 3 is going to be negative 5. Now what's the problem here? Well, the problem is you have a 0, right? And you're going to take the 0 and you're going to multiply it by your c and you're going to multiply it by that. And guess what this whole side is going to become? It's just 0. You got rid of now your c. I, I have no idea what the c value is. The c value could have been pi, 3.14159. It could have been, right, the <laughs> the uh, the... Uh, base of the natural log, it could have been any type of value, you know, uh, you want. And you'd never be able to figure it out. So that's why you cannot use the x-intercepts, because it just doesn't work. It, it's going to be a true, this is a true math statement right now, zero will indeed equal zero, but you can't find c doing it, right? You got to use that y-intercept. Anyway, that's it. All right, so that's how you approach it. Really do hope this helped. Um, if it did, if you could give us a hand, that would be awesome by just hitting the buttons, liking and subscribing, liking and subscribing. Why does that remind me of a song by Dolly Parton? Liking and subscribing. I don't even know what song it, nine to five, maybe? Liking, I don't know. Yes, I listen to Dolly Parton. Anyway, now that I've thoroughly embarrassed myself, I do bid you farewell and good luck.